Hey guys, what's up? Lucas here again, coming at you today with another unboxing video. This time we have quite the throwback with the Palm 5X, or VX as I will no doubt be calling it throughout this video. I used to own one of these guys way back in the day, and I was very excited to be able to find one on eBay that was still brand new, sealed in the original packaging. As you can see here, this is an ultra slim device made all the way back in 1999 with a retail price tag of $399. Uh, I did not pay that much for this one. This one I actually paid $1 for, which kind of goes to show the market for these guys these days, but it is still a very cool device and I'm very excited to show it to you all. Taking a quick tour around the box here, you'll find references to all sorts of obsolete hardware and software. It is quite the trip down memory lane here just to look at some of these names and specs. Uh, on the back of the box here, uh, we can see some of the features and benefits of the Palm VX. Essentially, we have such advanced functionality as keeping a digital calendar, address book, a to-do list, memo pad, and all sorts of personal organization applications. Yes, that is right. Even though there is a phone icon on this device, it does not make phone calls. This is purely a PDA, as we used to call it. And as you can see, this is intended to be a companion device for a PC, considering we have system requirements listed here on the side of the box. On the bottom here, we can see some of the accessories that were also available for the Palm VX, such as a wireless modem, so you could actually access the internet, uh, very basic web pages anyway, as well as your email and such things. Uh, we also have a hard case, which I actually owned back in the day, uh, as well as a power kit and a foldable keyboard, which I still think is actually pretty cool. On the top, we don't have much of anything except for a few dents. This box has been around for 20 years. Let's finally pop open the seal and see what is in store for us. And I do know that this is the original seal, considering it still has the palm sticker on the outside still. And there we have it, finally seeing the light of day after 20 years, 1999 all the way to 2019. Who would have thought, right? So let's go right ahead and lift the flap and see what we have inside. And straight away we are greeted with not so much the palm itself, but all of the pack-in materials like this getting started guide, which appears to be quite a bit heftier than the getting started guides we're used to these days. Still sealed as well, we'll set that off to the side for now. Uh, but we're not done yet, we still have more literature, uh, accessories for Palm Connected organizers, as well as a, an absolute monster of a Palm handbook right there in the middle sandwiched between a couple of other printed materials. Very interesting, we'll have a look at all of that later. Moving on to the box, we do have our hot sink cradle. Again, still wrapped in plastic, which is just kind of remarkable to see after all these years. We'll just pop the twist tie off here, and we will be able to have a look inside. So here we have it, the palm cradle with the hot sink button smack in the middle. And on the side, we do have an LED for charging, as well as a slot to hold our stylus. We'll set that off to the side for a little bit as well. And here's something quite amusing. We have an adapter for the hot sink cradle, but not to USB as you might expect. This is actually an adapter from 9-pin serial to 25-pin serial, just in case you might need that in order to connect your palm to your PC. Kind of amazing in this day and age that this is the adapter we'd get packed in. Uh, such were the times. Inside this little box here, we have the rest of the charging unit still wrapped in plastic. And as I take this one out, you'll see something rather interesting. Uh, this actually does not plug directly into the palm itself, but rather it features this proprietary connection that actually plugs into the serial cable on the back of the hot sink cradle. So that way you have two plugs in one, connects both to your PC and to power. And here we have a screen cover which is bi-directional by the way, so whether you're left-handed or right-handed, this will still work on the device. And inside this bubble wrap, we can now finally get a look at the Palm 5X itself. And we still have the screen plastic to peel off. Would you look at that? Uh, it says, make sure to charge for at least four hours before first use. However, I have a feeling the battery in this is going to be absolutely dead by this point. Uh, but fortunately, we can still enjoy the experience 
of peeling off the plastic for the first time. And there we have it, the Palm 5X. And we can see here, we actually have two styluses currently in the device. On the left-hand side, we have a plastic stylus. And on the right-hand side, we actually have a more heavy-duty metal stylus, which also has a reset pin in the top end that can be unscrewed. The left side is being a little bit more stubborn here, but typically this is where you're going to want to put your screen cover anyway, if you so choose. So this is essentially how you'd use the device. You'd have the stylus for writing notes or interacting, as well as the hardware buttons, which are a rare sight these days. Uh, they actually do feel rather mushy by today's standards. Uh, of course, it is not going to power on, which is to be expected, but you know, it was worth a shot. And these slots are actually very tight. I don't know if that's just because of the age of the device or if it was always like this. Uh, and here on the back, of course, you can see there is that reset pin, like I mentioned. So basically the Palm VX would simply slide into the hot sink cradle like this and you could pop it out when it was done charging and take it with you. Otherwise you would probably want to stash your stylus in the slot right here so that you could interact with it while at your PC. Pretty handy. And you would be interacting with this and your PC together. Uh, that is kind of something unique about the way Palms worked is that they synchronized with your PC. Here's a quick look at the screen cover here. Pretty nice and business-like with that leather look to it because these were really business devices. Nowadays, of course, we think of smartphones as being for everybody, but really back then it was very uncommon for the average person to use one of these. Uh, they would typically be reserved for business use only, which is also part of why you'll see so much emphasis on things like personal organization. And moving back to the mounds of literature for a moment here, we can take a look at the accessories for Palm Connected Organizers, the Palm Handbook and the Palm Solutions Guide. There's a lot of stuff here and I am honestly pretty excited to see what's in these. I know normally I make jokes about these being obligatory and not actually reading them, but this time I actually am quite interested to see what's inside. I mean, check out that Mac there on the right hand side there, that's just amazing right there. It's a whole new world with Palm, and you know, Palm might really be an understated company in today's tech world, but they really did introduce a whole new world of technology, really kickstarting off the smartphone revolution that we experienced about 10 years ago today. Uh, interestingly enough, as of 2019, uh, it is the 10 year anniversary since Palm introduced its last operating system, WebOS, uh, which unfortunately never really saw the traction it deserved. Uh, these guys were really Palm's heyday, especially the Palm 3 like you see here in similar models. Uh, these were just everywhere for a while in all kinds of business scenarios, but they even managed to find their way into some more tech savvy users homes. Uh, and here we have a registration card which of course will go absolutely nowhere because pretty much none of the companies represented here even exist anymore. But you can definitely see just the kind of mission that Palm had here, which was really unique for the time. They were really pushing the idea of pocket computers and having a computer in your wallet or in your backpack, places where you typically wouldn't have found computers at the time. Typically, you'd be using a desktop computer, maybe a laptop, and that would be just about it. So computers this small and compact were really quite advanced for the time, and it's honestly amazing that a device like the Palm V or the Palm VX uh, could exist that was as sleek as it was. Uh, and again, as you can see here, there were accessories such as modems to even get some web connectivity and things like that on these devices. So really way ahead of their time, possibly even too far ahead of its time, considering Palm as a company wasn't really able to survive the revolution it kickstarted. So with the accessories magazine out of the way, let's take a look at this mammoth Palm handbook and see what's inside. Again, you have to remember the year that this was released in. These days, it's expected that everyone is familiar with the way smartphones and other pocket computers work, but all of this was so very new at the time. Uh, this entire book is one language, by the way. You'd think that maybe it would have a very simple explanation of how to get the Palm connected to your PC and all that in multiple languages, but no. This is actually how to connect the Palm, how to write with the built-in graffiti uh, language, which was a major feature of the Palm, being able to write that way. Uh, how to connect it with Microsoft Office and all these things. This was all a very new idea, and again, being more business oriented, it was very important for Palm to include detailed literature like this to get companies interested and up and running, get their employees up and running with the software, 
and just get comfortable using a pocket computer. It was a very fundamentally different way of interacting with computers for the time. Last but not least, we do have our solutions guide for the Palm OS platform. Uh, this is pretty much going to be just more accessories, maybe a little more on the software side. There was a ton of software for the Palm. Uh, here's a good example of the year this was released in. Uh, lose 11 pounds instantly with documents to go. Um, I don't think you'd be losing 11 pounds for laptops today, period. Uh, so that's rather interesting. And of course, we're seeing some of the same accessories here as we saw before. Documents to Go is a very important part of the Palm ecosystem, although it wasn't even made by Palm. This was Microsoft Office, essentially. It was compatible with Microsoft Office and could run on Palms, which was a big deal at the time. And check out the prices on these apps as well. I mean, $24.99 for apps, that's just unheard of in today's Android and iOS markets. And I imagine absolutely none of these companies even exist anymore, so that's a little bit sad to see. Uh, perhaps a few of them are still around in some form, but uh, very likely not going to be the same companies that they were back in 1999. And this is actually kind of amusing, this picture here. Very interesting, the kind of mission that Palm had. It kind of reminds me of Microsoft with their goal of having a computer on every desk. Palm's was to have a computer in every hand. Uh, which is really an ambitious goal that they mostly succeeded in. Moving on to our second packet of literature, we have all sorts of things beginning with the Getting Started Guide, as well as all sorts of advertisements, graffiti stickers, and more, including desktop CD software I believe I saw in there. Uh, customer support information, again, all of this is going to be completely obsolete, although it is impressive the number of companies and locations referred to there. Here we have some graffiti stickers, which is a good reference for learning. Uh, writing on a palm could be done with a keyboard, but most of the time you'd be using this graffiti, which was like English, but not quite. So having a sticker like that around could be handy. Uh, and here we have just a folding card as well. So you can kind of leave this on your desk for reference. Here we have more registration information. Again, this is going absolutely nowhere and an advertisement for web apps of all things. Most of these companies are still around, but certainly you will not be able to use their services on Palm anymore. And of course we do have the Palm Desktop Organizer software and a nice sleeve here. Uh, very low system requirements, of course. Um, you can actually get updated versions of this software for Windows 10, but this one is not that version. So I will probably not be installing this one, but it is cool that you can actually still use this software even today. And finally, we'll take a look at the Getting Started Guide. Uh, this actually is pretty short, more what you would expect from a Getting Started Guide. Just shows you how to hook things up to your PC. And again, we have the graffiti reference. Uh, just kind of folds out here and gives you the basic rundown, unlike the handbook of everything you need to know just to get up and running with your Palm device. And more information for how to contact the Palm offices if you so need it. So that's about it for the unboxing of the Palm VX. As you can see here, really an impressive little device for the time. I have a lot of fond memories from my device that I used to have back in the day. It's long gone now, but I'm very happy to have it back in my hands. And of course I'd be remiss not to show you the device actually powered on and working, which unfortunately I can't do on battery because the battery itself is completely dead. But as you can see here, as soon as I plug it into the hot sink cradle, it powers right on and brings us to the introduction screen. Uh, as you can clearly see, this is a black and white display, actually grayscale, I believe it could support up to 16 shades of gray, although most of the interface was purely black and white. Um, the touchscreen is a pressure sensitive touchscreen, so it is not capacitive, which is part of why you need the stylus. Uh, as you can see, the clock is pre-configured to year 2000 there, which is interesting. Uh, once we have the touchscreen calibrated, we are greeted with the home screen, from which we could go off on all of our Palm adventures. That about does it for this video. If you enjoyed that, please consider liking and subscribing. Again, this has been Lucas, and I'll see you next time.